So this is the LoadStop driver training app. To start, we will need to download the LoadStop driver app from either the Apple Play Store or the Google Android App Store. So once the app's downloaded, you'll log in using your cell phone number. In the app, once you're in, you'll see pending loads, active loads, and a history of loads completed, and if a load was canceled. In the top left, we can navigate to our menu that has our username, phone number, our driver profile, documents, maintenance logs, settlements, expense reimbursements, and the app user guide. At this time, we are not running maintenance logs, settlements, or expense reimbursements through the app, but it is a feature that will be coming soon and we will document training on that piece as well. We also have the app user guide for any further details and questions. So when a load is tendered to a driver, we'll do everything from a weekly basis as far out as we have it. So a load will be sent to a driver for the entire week and show them pending. I'm gonna dispatch myself a load right now. If we're out of the board and a load is sent to a driver, it will populate with a notification. Give me one moment, the system logged me out because I was not active. Send a driver. So I just dispatched the load to myself. I have my notification muted right now, but I have a new shipment request right here. So I can go into the new shipment request and now everybody can see that I have three pending loads. The best way to sort this would be pick up date ascending this would give you the chronolog chronological order of the week. So you see that for this time, we have a 7.30 dispatch Tuesday, January 25th, the same dispatch Wednesday, the same dispatch Thursday. I'm gonna accept Tuesday's load, and it is now moved over to my active screen. So tracking is on. You'll also be prompted to share your location with your cell phone until um, you'll be prompted to share your location with, with the cell phone or with the lo your GPS location with the app. Select it as when the app is active. This can later be turned off, but at this time, LoadStop is currently working to integrate with Verizon Connect, so we do not have GPS tracking abilities through LoadStop yet. So this will serve as a macro point connection for all of the loads up until that point. Once we have the integration complete, we'll notify all the drivers so that they can turn that piece off if they so choose. So as we go into these apps, we're gonna to go to the load. Our first stop is gonna be Pulaski, Tennessee. These are gonna be a little bit different. Um, so our pickup stop number one is actually gonna be our departure stop. So just some verbiage in the app that we're going to have to um, kind of work through. So when we arrive to the yard, we would want to select app pickup. Once we have completed our pre-trip, we'll, we'll do pickup complete. And that will check call out this entire first stop. Our next stop is going to be Manchester, this Manchester plant at, or this Kasai North America plant in Manchester, Tennessee. So once we're departing the yard, we'll select en route. That would notify the system that we are now en route to this location. Once we've arrived, we'll select app pickup. And then once we're in the dock and we're beginning, beginning the loading process, we'll do loading started, loading complete, and then our pickup complete. It's important to note that you cannot move on to this check call for the delivery to Princeton, Indiana until the pickup is complete. So we can do in route and we can do pickup complete, similar to how we did for the Pulaski terminal, but pickup complete has to be done before we can move on. So if I say that I'm in transit to Princeton, Indiana, and then I cannot select anything in Pulaski. So it's gonna prompt me to finish this entire step out before we are able to actually transition to the next stop. So when we arrive to Princeton, we'll notate that we're at the delivery. Since this is actually gonna be a drop and hook, 
we're gonna not do unloading started or complete. We'll just do at delivery, and then once we're departing, we'll do delivered. This check calls that piece out, and then I can do my and transit in transit back to Pulaski to end my day. I can do at delivery or at the terminal location to notate that I have arrived and begun my post trip, and then we would do delivered to end our day and notate that our post trip has been completed. With this, the load has been completed and the check calls have all been sent in. The important thing to note is also in this documents tab, we have the ability to upload a BM BOL using our phone library. So I'm gonna do take a picture and I would take a picture of the BOL. We wanna capture each BOL that we use for billing purposes and store them in our uh, TMS system. So if a BOL is not captured, we will be prompted before moving these on to invoicing and payroll. When that piece is complete, that BOLs will have to be um, input before the system can move it on. So when payroll is integrated into the system, if it does not have a BOL shipment, we'll have to reach out to the driver to go back and upload the BOL shipment. Otherwise, it will hold up the payroll and invoicing processes. So I've uploaded the BOL. You can also do notes. So if there's a shortage on a route, we can do shortage at supplier 02135, and then put our ARC number that Toyota gave us, S123678. Done, and I can save that. That note is now input, and it's also visible in the TMS system that our dispatchers have access to. Now that that load has been completed, it's going to show in our history, which we can also fil filter by descending to show us everything that we have done from yesterday and back. So I can go back in here. I can add notes. I can also add documents to this as well. Now I'm going to go back to the pending. I'm going to accept this load for tomorrow. And then I can accept, oh, I'm sorry. Only one load can be active at a time. So I've accepted this load for tomorrow. You can also choose to do this um, when you arrive to the terminal, if you don't want the tracking to be on and it will start tracking once you're at the terminal going through the check call process. So you can reject if you reject the load you have to leave a comment, so maybe you're out sick. Okay, so we can only reject the load when we are not in process with a shipment. And now that this load has been assigned to me, I would have to contact my dispatcher to have the load removed. So we're gonna go back here. I'm going to cancel this load on my TMS system real quick. So this is load 57 that I'm in. Cancel. Cancel. It'll be removed. And in history, you can see that load 57 was now canceled. I can go back to the pending and I can reject this on vacation. That rejection has now been sent in and it notified the dispatchers with that note. So that's how we use the TMS system, run through the check calls, input our BOLs, and add notes. That's going to be the base of everything that we want to complete and track through this system currently. And as we continue to integrate the system with more functions, we'll create more in-depth trainings for those pieces as well to distribute. So thank you for everybody's time. If you have any questions, um, you can contact Benjamin Bishop or Philip Griggs. Um, I've been working closely with Philip as well to try and implement this. And as we learn more, we'll keep on adding. So thank you for your time. If you have questions, give us a call.